Hey everybody. I promised I would do a video showing how I do echo dyeing um, using a steam iron and a few other simple things that you'll need. Um, I have a few things that I know that will uh, actually do the dyeing on the paper and then there's a few things that I'm going to do as a test. So you're kind of going to have to see what works, what you have, and what will actually work for the transfer process. So the first thing that you need is some aloe powder and you can get this down where the spices are. It's really inexpensive. Um, for this small little container of water, I used probably, I don't know, two teaspoons in there, just enough to dissolve it. So, Let's go ahead and start. And I'll tell you the other things that you'll need as we go along. You need a, a towel down on your surface um, just to protect it from the heat because you will be holding the iron in one spot for a while to get it to carry through. So you need a paper towel and you just dip it and soak it in the water, wring it out, and you're just gonna go over your, your sheet. And I'm using, I think this is 20 pound copy paper, so you don't need heavy duty paper uh, to do this. All right, so let's start with what I know will work. Um, I believe this is from, we have a small little tree on the side of the house, and I believe this is from a flowering plum tree. Again, you're just gonna have to figure out what works, what's gonna carry the color, the alum powder actually helps to transfer the dye and the um, print onto the paper. So I'm just laying these face down. You will get some carry through onto the other side of the paper and that's fine. Um, so we're just gonna keep like doing this and stacking using the alum powder, alum powdered water and going over it oh and i do once i do this i do have um, a spray bottle that's about half water half white vinegar and that oh and there's a little bit of coffee dye in it but that's okay <laughs> um no big deal so just kind of go with it <clears throat> the <clears throat> excuse me sinuses and allergies it's that time of the year um, the other thing that I do know that'll work, these are black petunias and they actually turn blue on the paper for whatever reason. I don't know why they do. Um, these are some purple ones. So I'm just kind of laying these down, spreading them out onto the paper like that. So again, I know these will work. and make a really nice color on there. All right, so then another another sheet. Kind of be careful how you lay it down so it's even. It's not a precise process, trust me. So when I say be careful, I just mean so you don't slide your flowers all over the place. A little bit more of this. Oh, now we're back to just water and vinegar. Yay. I'm only gonna do a couple just so you can see the effect. Oh, more flowers. So these are the ones I'm going to test. I don't think these are going to do anything. This is from uh, Petals from a Lily. I, I just think the color, they're not going to do much. And this is a carnation. I really, again, I don't, I'm going to have to take this back off. I don't think this is going to do much either. I don't know. I haven't tried it. So this is a first in front of the camera for you and for me to see. All right, another sheet, more of the alum water. Um, let's do more that I know will show. And honestly, with these, I kind of like to leave the stems too because the stems have quite a bit of the natural dye in them. So they, they look really cool. And I plan on using these in a um, witchy type journal. So it'll kind of have a really cool kind of effect, I'm hoping. 
You don't have to be precise. I, I've watched others and they say, make sure you fill in all the white spots. Well, I don't do that. I just, I mean, nature isn't perfect, so why am I trying to make this perfect? Okay, so I have some um, Astromeria, a deep color. Again, I don't know what color it's gonna turn out. So we'll kind of spread them around and then I'll fill in with more of the flowering plum or whatever that tree is. I have no idea um, if it comes apart. Here we go. So you see, I'm not being precise. I'm not a perfectionist in the least. I have a little bit of I, I like things in order, but I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to things that have to do with nature. So, anyway, all right, so we got all of that. Now, I ran out of wax paper doing my dyed wax paper process, so I'm just gonna use what I have. I do not think that the color will transfer um, because it has been rinsed with cold water, but we'll see what happens. Worst case scenario, it, it will. I don't know. I don't know if I sprayed this. Let me spray that. Okay, so let's get to it so we can do the reveal. So I just have my iron set on the highest setting. And I'll use the steam intermittently and hold it down. And like I said, you really have to hold it on here a while. And what the wax paper in between does <clears throat> is keep you from getting scorch marks on your white paper. So I don't have any music and I'm not gonna poison your ears with my singing. So sing a song in your head, I guess. All right. You can, I don't know if you can see that. <clears throat> you can kind of see it coming through a little bit. Sorry about the lighting. See a little bit. So let's just keep going. <clears throat> and <clears throat> Sorry. When you're doing this, I guess it's because it's, you know, vegetation, considered vegetation you know, the leaves and that. It literally smells like um, really overcooked asparagus. I can't tell you it smells good. It's probably a combination of the vinegar with the plants itself, but it's not a great smell. Anyway, all right, <clears throat> let's see what we have. Okay, so probably could have done this longer but I was impatient so you just peel them off oh I did get a little bit from the astromeria not a lot yeah I could have held that down longer so tell you what there is one thing I wanted to try I know that the um, stamen with the pollen at the ends from the lily is it'll stain anything if you get it on your hands I know I did that a lot when I was a florist so I'm gonna put this back down, spray it again, because I really want that to come through more. So let's hold the iron down longer and then see kind of what we get from the pollen that's on the end of the stamens. I have no idea. I've never even tried using anything but the petunias before. I, actually, I did. I tried rose petals. And rose petals using this method does not work. I have no idea why. <clears throat> I really should have got some water. So yeah, the pollen on the stamen probably isn't a real good idea since I have allergies, but <laughs> I tend to figure things out as I go along and that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. Let's see what we have. Let me move this so the light comes through. And I 
rip the page. Isn't it great? All right, so yeah, I was right. The um, Even though I tear, tore that up, you can see that the pollen that's on the end of the stamens from the lily really did transfer on there nice. So I can still salvage that. I mean, I'll use it for ephemera, cut around it. And let's lift these off. So you see when I said it comes through both sides? So this is from the back side of this, and that's how it came through. So the leaves actually, from that uh, flowering plum or whatever it is, even though they're really, really dark, they have enough of the, um, uh, I guess it's the chlorophyll in the dye. And then this purpley blue color is from the stem. So I have no idea why it, does that but I really like it and I think it's pretty cool all right so you can see that the heat as I went down on it um, with the iron it didn't really go all the way down through let me see something over here yep my cat unplugged the iron oh I love my kitty cat all right That sounds better. So maybe I would recommend um, just doing like two or three layers of these instead of trying to do a whole big stack like you typically would when you do the old fashioned, the boil on top of the stove method. Then you can really stack it because you're boiling it for such a long time that it really can transfer. Um, this way, uh, doing it like this, you really don't need to worry so much about that. So I would say just do a couple layers at a time and you don't have to worry about stacking, stacking, stacking. All right, so let's pull that off. Okay, so. Yeah, I didn't think the lilies would do much. So that's kind of what I got from that. And it's not, it's not really that impressive, which is disappointing. But you can see the petunias coming through on the other side there. So those are gonna be really pretty. So now to get all these pieces of carnation off of here. I guess there was a little bit of transfer, but it was more yellow, which is it's just funny to me the way these change colors and look nothing like what you thought it would look like um, once it hits the alum water, the vinegar, and then the steam and the heat. It does really change the color of it. So there's, there's the really pretty. So again, this is from the black petunias and why they turn blue I don't know I guess I was thinking about it and if you see somebody with like truly deep real natural black hair in the sunlight sometimes it almost looks like it's got like it's like a cobalt blue or something like it's got that hint of it so maybe it's the same premise I don't know I'm not a scientist that would be my daughter Okay, so that turned out gorgeous. I love that. And then there's the back side. So that would be good for like using in a journal. So you've got one side like that, and then you've got the other side like that. So that is it. It's pretty simple. Just make sure you have the alum powder. Um, again, it's probably about two teaspoons to half a cup of hot water, dissolve it. And then the uh, water mixture with the vinegar is about half and half. That's what I use. So anyway, that's it. I'm gonna set these out and let them dry. 
and I will talk to everyone later and have fun crafting. These will definitely be going into uh, one of my witchy journals that I start on, so look for that. Talk to everybody soon. Bye.